Lesson 96, the difference of two squares theorem. So we know from lesson 62 that we could say two times two equals four. And we can also say that negative two times negative two equals four, right? And we know that when we say square root of four, we're going to end up with a positive number unless we say the negative of the square root of four and then that gives us a negative number. However, when we have x squared, we are looking at this format right here. So if x squared equals four, it could be positive two or it could be negative two. We don't know which is which. So we have to think about that whenever we are solving for a square. All right, so let's talk about this theorem and let's look at two imaginary numbers, p square and q square. If p equals q, then we can say that p square equals q square, right? Now, in order to solve for these, we could say, we could subtract q from both sides, and we would end up with p squared minus q squared equals zero. Well, guess what we have? We have a perfect square. We have a square minus a square, which gives us the ability to say p plus q times p minus q equals zero. So we can factor this in order to solve. And then the way we would solve is by saying, okay, either this one equals zero or this one equals zero, because if either one of them equals zero times the other, it, your answer is zero. So it doesn't matter. One of them is going to equal zero. So let's just solve as if one or the other does. We'll solve for both of them. Okay. So um, when we see this here, we can say that um, P, we can get rid of the square, and we can say that P square equals Q square. We can say, we can take the square root off of it and say that P is then equal to the square root, plus or minus, of Q squared. And that means that P, because if we solve for this, P is either going to be equal to Q or P is going to be equal to negative Q. So we can say Q squared, square root of Q squared is either a positive or negative Q. And I'll show you how to get there. Let me back up. If we said p plus q equals zero, or p minus q equals zero, which is one of these is equal to zero, then we would subtract q from both sides on this and have p equals negative q, or we would add q to both sides and it was and we would have p equals positive q which is the same thing as saying p equals plus or minus q, okay? We can skip this entire step by just saying up here that p squared equals q squared. So p must equal plus or minus the square root of q squared. So whatever this value is, we put in here and we get the plus or minus value of it. This is the format we're going to use. The theorem states that if p and q are real numbers, and if p squared equals q squared, then p can equal positive q 
or negative Q, just like we wrote down here. Okay? So this is what all of this means. If you have any questions, it is a little bit difficult and complex. I'm going to clear the page. I'm going to work some problems so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's start with 96.1 P squared equals 16. Okay, so we can assume or we put it in its format. This is Q squared. So in order to get the, rid of the square of P, we have to do the square plus or minus of the 16. So P would equal plus or minus the square root of 16, which means that P would equal plus or minus 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. 4 is the square root of 16. Now, this is the short way. Let me show you the long way. You'll get the exact same answer. If we went the long way and said P squared equals 16, and we subtracted 16 from both sides, we would get P squared minus 16 equals 0. Then we would get, this is a perfect square, so we would say P minus 4 times P plus 4 equals zero, right? And then we would solve for each one being zero. It would be P minus four equals zero, or P plus four equals zero. And we would add four to both sides here. And that would be P equals positive four. Or we subtracted four from both sides, and P would equal so, and it would be or p would equal a negative 4. This is faster. It's the same answer, but it's faster because we would write this as p equals plus or minus 4. Okay? Do we see how much faster this is? Three steps versus all of these. So this is the format we want to use to figure out what p equals, what that first square equals. So let's switch colors, let's do 96.2. And this comes in handy using it this way because what if you don't have a perfect square? So that's our next problem. We have p squared equals 41. 41 is not a perfect square, but we can say p equals plus or minus the square root of 41 right? That's as far as we can go. That's our answer. We don't have to subtract 41 and try to figure out how to factor it. We're just, we're done. That's why we want to use this format and just take the square root of whatever is in the Q squared section or side. All right, one more. I'm going to change the color. Let's do 96.3. And that says K squared equals 13. All we're saying is that this doesn't have to be a P. It could be an X, it could be a Y, it could be a K, it doesn't matter. We're going to do the same thing. K equals plus or minus the square root of 13. That's as far as we can go. That's our answer. And we're done. And that is all we have for Lesson 96. That is all we are learning how to do is to identify how to unsquare and get the positive, negative, correct answer. And if it can't square it out of the square root, you leave it in the radical sign, just as it is with the plus or minus sign. All right, I will see you in lesson 97.